Good morning, class family. It's a thankful Thursday and happy Groundhog Day. Let's go ahead and look at our message and see what we're doing today at school in language arts. Show me the share team and a class family. Follow along with your eyes and listen with your ears. Use your finger to point. Ready? Let's start with the date. February 2nd, 2023, dear class family, today is Thursday. We will learn a lot at school. First, we will review letter sounds. Next, we will tap out words and sort objects with capital M and capital N. Then we will talk about how nonfiction books can be about people from the past or present. Last, we will make the pictures match the story. We will do literacy centers. Love, Miss Joyner. All right, class family, let's look back and reread the message on this special Groundhog Day. Are you ready? Use your finger to point. Let's start with this month. All right, I see the abbreviation of capital F-E-B period. What does that shortened version stand for? Do you remember? It is February. If you remember that, go ahead and kiss your brain. Good writers and mathematicians can write the date in many different ways. One of the ways is to write the shortened version or abbreviation of that month. So instead of writing the whole word February, we're writing F-E-B period. Let's reread the whole date. Are you ready? Use your finger to point. February 2nd, 2023. After the date, let's read the greeting. Are you ready? Dear class family, what's the name of this punctuation mark that comes after the greeting? Hmm, starts on the line and does a little curve. Do you remember? It is a comma, if you remember that great job. Now, let's go ahead and look at the first telling sentence. Do you remember the day of the week we're on today? Hmm, let's reread. Today is Thursday, it is Thursday, and it's a thankful Thursday. As we're rereading, notice all of the capital letters that start every single telling sentence. We're gonna be circling those capital letters in person with a marker. And we're gonna find the punctuation marks at the end of these telling sentences. Do you remember what this punctuation mark is called? Look at the end of this telling sentence. It's a little dot, what is that called? It is a period. So we will be finding periods within the message and circling them. Remember, good writers put periods at the end of telling sentences and statements in addition to abbreviations, like at the end of February for this abbrevi abbreviation there, or for example, in my name for Miss. There are so many different abbreviations where you're, you'll see a period as well. Let's go ahead and continue rereading. We will learn a lot of school. Oh, that's true, class family. We do that each day to be a great collaborator, communicator, and creative and critical thinker. So we're going to do this by listening, writing and drawing, asking and answering questions, making connections, and remember to speak loudly and clearly for all to hear. Here, you're going to use your mouth to speak and your ears to listen. Let's continue rereading. First, we'll review letter sounds, just what we do every day. We'll review the ABCs. We'll sing the traditional ABC song. We'll do the letters, the sounds, the picture to match that initial letter, in addition to American Sign Language. Let's go ahead and review the vowels at this time. Remember, vowels have red in the background. A, apple, a, e, ed, a, i, itch, i, o, octopus, a, and u, up, a. All right, next we'll tap out words and sort objects with M and N. So we're gonna tap out some CVC words. You'll see the short vowel sounds in the middle of those words. And we're gonna sort objects with capital M and capital N. So first we're gonna practice writing this before we do our object sort. Remember for capital M, you're gonna pull straight down, pick up, slant down, slant up, pull straight down. So we're gonna practice M man M. Mm. In addition to N nut N, we're gonna practice writing. Go straight down, then slant down, 
and then slip, go straight down there. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and practice that. And then we're going to do an object sort where we have objects that start with M and N and we're going to put them in a container. Jerome, please. We're going to choose an object and figure, does that have M man mm, or N nut mm, at the beginning? And we're going to do our sort together as a class family. Then we'll look, talk about how nonfiction books can be about people from the past or present. We will we'll go over the parts of the book. We'll review how nonfiction texts teach, inform, and explain real things. And they can be about people from the past or present. For example, this nonfiction text, Children Around the World, has different information from children in different countries. So this text has current information of children in the present. It's a nonfiction text. Now, there are other books like this one on librarians. That could be something that happens now in the present. But we may have a book about someone from the past, like Harriet Tubman and Black History Month. So when we look at this nonfiction text, we're gonna be learning information about Harriet Tubman and more about Black History Month, but it's from the past. This person's from the past. Now, we also have What is COVID-19, another nonfiction text, and that's happening currently. So this is a nonfiction text with information about what's happening to people now. And for example, this one, George Washington's Teeth. Oh, well, that's definitely a nonfiction text about the first president, but this one is someone from the past, okay? All right, so we're gonna be talking about how nonfiction text can be about people from the past or present. All right, last we'll make pictures to match the story and we will do literacy centers. When you make your writing easy to read, remember to start with a capital letter. Remember each sentence tells a complete idea. You're gonna write a letter for each sound. Make sure that you also have finger spaces between the words so the words don't smush together and put a period at the end, okay, of each telling sentence or statement. Make sure your pictures help with the words. We're gonna write work on this as we're working on our next All About book. Okay, we're gonna do literacy centers. It's a great day, it's fantastic. Get your fans ready. Fantastic. Our do you like question of yes or no answers is dun, dun, dun. do you like Cheerios? Well, do you? Think about your answer and we'll practice being a great communicator and share why. Do you like Cheerios? <laughs>